Hey everybody, today we get to meet Lawrence Mercado. He's a special makeup and effects artist for Local 706. And this year he's one of the Emmy nominated makeup artists for outstanding period and or character makeup for American Horror Story 1984. I got to meet Lawrence while day playing on the set of Snowfall. Let's go talk. Hi, this is Lawrence Mercado, and I am here with JQ on Makeup Trailer Talk. All right, awesome. Hey, everybody. Uh, today we are here with Lawrence Mercado, which I'm going to say it like that. <laughs> um, this is a Latin brother from another mother, and I'm so stoked to uh, have Lawrence today. Thank you so much for your time. I met Lawrence because uh, I actually was lucky enough to be asked to day play on Snowfall by Miss Debbie Denson, who we love and adore, and so was Lawrence, and our first day of work together, we just hit it off, and the rest is history. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for being here, Lawrence. Um, I, I, I want to start off this, this show today by, um, in a way that I haven't yet, which is in a congratulatory sense, because <laughs> Before we scheduled this interview, um, you know, Emmy consideration was up, people submit their work, your show submit their work, you just let it go into the air. But what we found out yesterday was that our dear Lawrence over here, uh, he is now an Emmy-nominated makeup artist for American Horror Story 1984. I was let alone one, I was happy to be on one day of a show I love watching, but to be able to continuously come in and, and towards just like joining the team was, you know, beyond, I was, I was over the moon and it was just uh, like that alone I would have walked away with and been happy forever. Uh, but it was, I don't know, it, it, it's still very surreal to even talk about, but I, I'm just a, like I said, I say it all the time, I'm just a crazy Latin Hispanic kid from San Antonio, Texas that always wanted to do this and the fact that I got to do it and got to just, I don't know, be nominated for something is insane. So when <laughs> I'm, I'm stoked to just be, you know, I'm humbled and stoked to just be around all these talented makeup artists. So Lawrence, just like a really quick backstory for those of us who don't know you, because I think there's a misconception about special effects makeup artists is that you guys are all in LA. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you technically started where in your makeup life? I started in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, I was uh, the middle boy of three kids, three boys for my mom. And we were always just, my family was always very artsy. I was originally going to be an actor. So I went to acting school and everything and got an agent. And I just didn't like it as much. And I wanted to learn more of the behind the scenes stuff. And... My dad was, every Sunday we would watch uh, either Three Stooges or uh, Universal Monsters and eat pancakes. That was the whole Sunday, every Sunday. Watching Frankenstein with my pops for the first time was mind blowing because I didn't know that that was a real person or how you did something like that. And actually my name, Lawrence, is from uh, the Wolfman, Lawrence Talbot. That's incredible. But uh, yeah, fast forward to just learning it all from school and doing it in theater and you, being a, uh, ho like everybody else, a haunt person where I was in a haunted house for a long time and picked it up from there and just grasped it and held on to it as long as I could. And I was in a touring band for a while. So I was trying to do both. And wow, um, you had lives, Lawrence. <laughs> yeah, I was a, I was a professional drummer for about 14 years and uh, with about three or four bands and nobody knows any of that here, which is funny because I, everyone just sees the makeup, but I was in a couple of bands prior to this that toured a lot. And, and Let's talk about that aspect of things, actually. So you're coming from a different place where you did work in San Antonio. What's, what's the difference in vibe when you worked in Texas compared to coming to California and working here? The difference to me, if anything, it's just a little bit more um, polished, really. Because I didn't get to ever work in a trailer setting or in a studio setting in Texas. It was always like, you know, independent movies here and there or commercials right. that were like set up in this restroom, set up in this bathroom. Yeah. You know, always oh, the bathroom. Yeah. Set up in this, <laughs> yeah. this bathroom, just move this aside, you know, whatever. So 
and you still get that every once in a while, no matter what tier of anything you're at, you'll still be right. set up wherever. And I've come to learn that, but because everyone that's here wants to be that. So they try to show that off as much as possible, no matter where independent or not, they want to be able to afford a trailer for you. They want all of that, but yeah, they just can't and you've got to just roll with it. Right. So I always try to think like, well, if, if you have some sort of a budget, let's kind of figure out where your vision's at. And we'll figure out what category that falls in for us to budget it. I still want to make your vision come to life. We just can't give you 25 zombies if you can only afford two of them. Exactly. Yeah, just a little bit of realism into the numbers, which, which follows through because that speaks volumes about who you are as a businessman. And business is tricky to me. I feel like some people you see their true selves in business. And then I feel like some people you definitely see the business person like... Yeah, exactly. And I also feel like if I can't personally be there for you, like if you called me and said, hey, I want you to do this, I'm not going to turn around and say like, oh, well, I don't want to do it after all. At least I'll, maybe I'll pass you on to somebody that's in the industry that just got in the independent, just barely even starting. Maybe right. the two of you can mesh a little better because maybe that's where they need to learn and you need to learn and figure out where, where you guys connect a little bit more. So I've just created a, a connection with those two people. You never know. Like, I just don't want to leave anybody ever hanging. If you were able to walk into a makeup trailer and you don't know anybody on the team you were called in that day, no matter what position you're called in on, what, it, what do you wish that people in that makeup trailer knew about you before you ever stepped in? Um, fun to work with. Oh, that's awesome. Honestly, like I just, I mean, it's, it's a huge thing for me to be able to, I mean, I'm not trying to please everybody. I'm just trying to be an all around, like this guy can either do a makeup exactly the way you need him to do a makeup and, or assist you to do that makeup. If anything, if I walk into somewhere, it's like, Hey, it's him. Like, it's cool. I've heard about you, but I don't know you. Nice to meet you. Um, just, yeah. Yeah. That, that's usually it. Just, I want to be able to be known as talented and fun to work with. Like those yeah. are the things, you know? What do you wish that your team would know about you before they step into your space? Uh, laid back, but stern. Like he's going to get, we're, we're going to have fun. We're going to do what we need to do. But, you know, I would like to be known to just, you know, he's fun. He's fun to work for. And I want to come back and work for him whenever he needs me. Absolutely. Which, you know, I mean, yeah, you know where you want to work. So you know what you would want to work in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Prior to all this, what in the makeup trailer do you wish you could change about the way that we interact with each other on a daily? I don't really know if I would change anything per se. I mean, beyond the COVID situation, obviously the distancing and stuff, but if it was prior to that, it's just, you know, uh, I'm a person that doesn't like to work in silence. So I like music. I love music. I think music brings everyone together. I, I, that, if anything, that maybe less silence. Absolutely. And then I do understand that if an actor has to get into their zone, cool, turn the music off, let them do their thing, work in silence. That's great. But if it's a very, I think the music just brings a uh, sense of like a, a, a blanket of comfort to everyone throughout the whole trailer. What kind of attributes do you like in people when you're on a big makeup team? Somebody that doesn't freak out immediately if something wrong happens. If somebody can just jump to it and not even bat an eye, I mean, most of us have come from independent uh, movies, again, where you just have to know everything. Mm -hmm. You need to have everything in your kit. You need to be set for stuff. You know, if anything, having to be on set and stand there next to a director and a director turn around and be like, you know what? I didn't tell you this, but I want a bullet hole in this forehead. So where do you feel that you excel in the makeup trailer? Like no matter what, no matter what position you're put into. I would say definitely a vibe. I try to put off a good vibe, a very uh, diffusing vibe. So if something's going crazy, I'm at least there to be like, what do you need? Let me take this off your back. Like, let me, whatever you're doing, I can do it for you. I feel, especially having worked with you on set, you are a very comfortable, chill vibe, but somebody who cares. There are also aspects of us as artists where no matter what we do or how hard we try, we trip. And I want to know, what makes you trip? I'll be so focused on the makeup that I will turn around and forget to put towels in the 
in the thing for the head department. Like, I'm just like, little things like that. I'm like, oh, I got to remember that. I gotta, and I get hard on myself because I'm like, I don't want to be that person that doesn't get called back because I didn't do that. What does it mean to you to be an artist? To be able to get whatever's in here out there so people can see what you're thinking about. Where do you have zero tolerance? Being rude, yelling at each other, yelling at someone. Like, I just, I can't stand it. I've had somebody yell at me in front of the whole cast and crew, and I've just been like, I didn't say anything. I just stared at them enough to where they just looked at me and went, I'm sorry, I just, I lost it there. And lying to me. Like, don't lie to me about something. Don't tell me that, you know, like, be honest with me. No matter what, honesty is huge. Like, if you can just be honest and truthful with me and say, like, hey, I didn't want to bring you on because of this thing, cool. If someone could have told you anything before you came into the makeup industry, somebody who's not a makeup artist, what would you wish they would have told you? Oh, that there's a sandwich truck? <laughs> that there's a sandwich truck! <laughs> I was so naive thinking like, they just have a place where you have free food? That's awesome. Or if you had to pick a department that you like more than makeup on set, who is it? Uh, art design. Art design was really, it's really cool. Or blowing stuff up. Be the Pyro! <laughs> oh, Lawrence, thank you so much for being with us today, man. I'm not only stoked to talk to you because we've been quarantined, but I'm actually really excited for the people who don't know you yet to get just little tidbits of who you are because you're a rad guy. <laughs> um, right back at you. I, I, I really love being around you and just having this kind of friendship with you. I, I see you as a sister and it's always been that. Ah, oh, thanks, man. I, oh, I didn't want to say that, but I feel that way about you too. Shit, see, this is why we need to talk. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for joining us today and I hope you enjoyed our time with Lawrence because I know that I have and hope to see you sooner than later, man. Cool, thank you.